the soldier took a gun and placed it at my forehead and told me that he was going to end my life. David Nasser was only nine when the soldiers came to his school in Iran and threatened his life. His parents knew the time had come to flee the ongoing revolution and seek refuge in the U.S. We came here at the, at the same time that the American hostages were taken uh, in the American embassy in Iran. And so people were watching on TV how the Iranians were burning the American flag and calling it America the great Satan. We moved right in at the wrong time from the wrong place. My father was having a hard time just being hired by someone. And I was having a hard time just finding a friend. David struggled to learn English and dreaded going to school. Did kids say things to you? Sure. I mean, every nickname that you can think of, every, you know, every 7-Eleven joke, every turban joke, you start to really think, I must not be as good. David's life changed dramatically right before high school. It was the last day of the summer, and I was sitting in my room, and I was crying, and uh, my dad heard me, and he walked in, and I told him, I said, Dad, nobody likes me. I don't like them. You know, I'm kind of... Uh, the school loner and just coming from a different part of the world has just really not been easy for me. And, um, and my father just, you know, said, okay, well, let's go. My dad took me to the mall and, uh, you know, the mall is where you go when you want to clone <laughs> America. And I wanted to be like everyone else. So I mm -hmm. got new clothes, new shoes, new haircut, new cl you know, uh, just everything. And overnight with this extreme makeover, you know, I went and found acceptance. So one day you're a geek, and the next day... Yeah, um, I, I tell people I went from geek to chic. You know, <laughs> I went from Abdul to Julio. I climbed up the social ladder and ended up in the right place in the yearbook and all of these th different things, but I was as empty as empty could still be. Were you raised a Muslim? I was. We were not the most fundamental, devout family. Um, there was a strong sense of faith in our home. I still remember my mother praying, you know, three times a day. And I, I remember you know, being taught the Quran. David still felt disconnected, even with his newfound popularity. When high school ended, his loneliness intensified. He turned to a friend for help. I was telling him how lonely I was, and he, uh, he invited me to go to church with him. And I said, man, I don't want to go to church. You know, I hate religion. And he said, no, 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 this isn't the Muslim religion. This is Christianity. I wasn't convinced. And then he named the five prettiest girls from our high school. And he said, they all go to our church. <laughs> and immediately I was, I was motivated. They became my friend. They, they, you know, they met me right where I was in life. I'm getting a whiff of something that I can't deny. I mean, I'm seeing something that's radiating out of your life that's authentic. When I asked what's different, they always said Jesus Christ. Jesus has changed our lives. He's the Son of God. He's lived the perfect life. And he's died the sinner's death. He wants to live in your life. He wants to come and transform you. One night after church, David's transformation began. And I realized that people are always going to let you down. Churches will always let you down. But Jesus himself never will. And that he was the one calling me. And I said, Jesus, you know, I want you to save me. <laughs> you know, I want you to save me from what? From myself, from religion, from um, performance, from all these different things. It doesn't mean that struggle goes away. It doesn't mean that persecution goes away. It doesn't mean that doubt goes away. It just means that you begin a new journey as a new you, you know, and that you're not alone. David's parents put up with what they thought was his religious phase for a while. But when he decided to be baptized, they put their foot down. That was the night that my parents basically said, okay, well, you're out of the house. But the beauty of it is that, you know, um, since that moment, you know, one by one, I've seen my entire family come to Jesus Christ. If you connect with God, there is no way, there is no way that you will ever be the same. Evangelist David Nasser now speaks to half a million people every year. We all long for acceptance. We all long for purpose. And we all long to fill this empty hole in our lives with what we think is going to make us not feel empty anymore. David's new book, A Call to Grace, focuses on an issue he believes we all struggle with, regardless of our nationality. The greatest obstacle for someone from, a, from the Muslim faith when it comes to Christianity is the grace factor. You know, I, I think they, they see 
this idea of you and I finding our salvation and earning the favor of God by the completed works of Jesus as kind of a cop-out. They go, so God just loves you no matter what you've done? It's not that salvation is easy. It's that salvation is impossible when it comes to you being good enough. Because when are you ever good enough? When are you ever righteous enough? When are you ever pure enough? You know, if there's one thing that I know I'm going to be consistent in today is being inconsistent, you know, in my today. I mean, we all fail every day. We are going to live imperfect lives. And that's why we need a perfect Savior.